We brought you stories of strange creatures suspected of being alien corpses before. They've turned up in Charleston, South Carolina, Russia's Alma region, and elsewhere. So when we saw evidence of another mysterious case, this time from down under, we felt it was our duty to investigate. March 2nd, 2022, it's morning in the suburb of Marrickville, just outside Sydney, Australia. After days of intense rainstorms, a jogger is enjoying a break in the weather to take a run, when something unusual on the ground suddenly catches his eye. It appears to be an oval-shaped creature, perhaps two inches long. Take a closer look. Is that an eye and a tail? Whatever it is, it not only surprised the jogger, but researcher Kim Gerhardt as well. I don't see any scales. I certainly don't see any hair. It almost has kind of a gelatinous look to it. It's kind of slimy, kind of pale, gray or silver. In fact, as far-fetched as it seems, the gray nature and fetal form of this creature has some on social media theorizing this could be the remains of a developing alien life form. Perhaps the last time an alleged alien baby made news headlines was in 1996 in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Referred to as the Kishtim Dwarf, there was a strange humanoid creature that was found by a local woman. It was only about 10 inches long. To this day, many of the villagers in this particular region still wonder whether it was, in fact, some type of alien creature. We analyzed the Kishtim footage in an earlier episode. And now, with this strange life form, could there be a link between these mysterious creatures appearing around the world? In 1961, astronomer and physicist Frank Drake proposed what's been called the Drake Equation as a way to come up with a mathematical formula to estimate how many other alien civilizations are out there. Looking at this, I don't think there's any question that it appears to be some sort of early stage life form. But what? And is it alien? Let's ask the experts. We begin with marine biologist Dr. Sheikh Hunger. People might think this looks a bit alien because it's kind of gray. It doesn't look like it has skin or scales, but I don't think that's what we're seeing here. It looks like it almost might be something like a squid or octopus. OK, so Dr. Conger thinks we've got an earthly organism here. But wait a minute. Why would a fetal squid or octopus be on the road? It could be a phenomenon called animal rain. These animal rains tend to happen in coastal environments where there's a lot of dynamic weather. How would that even be possible? We take that question to meteorologist Juan Hernandez. The weather conditions across Australia were very rare for this time of the year. That led to above normal rainfall. In addition to tropical cyclones across the region. Hernandez explains that the severe weather could have led to a cyclone effect known as a water spout. The updraft speeds of water spouts oftentimes exceeds 20 miles an hour. Given the radar data that we have from that day in Sydney, it is possible that this organism was picked up and deposited somewhere else due to water spouts. But another explanation is uh, birds. Birds have come around, picked up that animal from the water, and as they're flying, drop the animal somewhere else. But since there is no obvious injury to this creature, it more than likely did not come from a high distance in the sky. And on closer examination, Conger makes an important discovery. She believes whatever this is, it didn't come from the ocean. I can tell that this long tail-like appendage is actually likely an embryonic notochord. The notochord is the predecessor to the spine. We all have this in the womb. In addition, these kind of ridges that we see here, to me, look a lot like gill slits. And that's another interesting aspect of mammal evolution. Mammals in the womb as embryos actually have gill slits as a remnant of our history beginning as aquatic fish. So I think this is actually a terrestrial organism. It's just at a very early stage of development. If I had to guess, I would say this is probably a marsupial embryo, maybe something like a possum, especially because this is in Australia, which really is the land of marsupials. Marsupials don't develop fully in the womb. At some point, they actually 
migrate from the womb to the maternal pouch of the mother and continue development there. So it's biologically possible that something could have gone wrong during the early development of this animal. So instead of ending up in the marsupial pouch, for example, it ended up in an unnatural environment. But how did it get here? Hernandez may discount the animal rain theory, but he still believes Mother Nature played a role. The atypical weather conditions that we saw around Sydney contributed to significant flash flooding. And it's possible that this particular organism lived somewhere far away from Sydney and was deposited in the Sydney area due to flash flooding. Our verdict, we're going with a possum embryo. It seems to us both Hernandez and Conger's takes on what it is and how it got there add up. And unfortunately, due to climate change, it also seems that Australia will see more and more intense weather events like the one that likely washed this creature into the streets. 2021, in an indiscernible location, an anonymous TikTok user is sweeping up a tiled floor when he comes across something unusual. A broomstick prods at an amorphous, transparent blob on the ground. It seems to slide across the floor with little to no resistance, fluid and dappled like the surface of a puddle. It's pretty weird. I mean, anybody finding something like this in their kitchen would be pretty freaked out. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt points out there might be truth behind the famous blob so ingrained in pop culture. The iconic sci-fi movie The Blob was actually based on a real incident that occurred back in 1950. Four Philadelphia police officers encountered this weird blob-like creature that was about six feet in diameter, about a foot thick. It appeared to be alive. And I'm wondering if this could be somehow related to this weird thing that we're seeing on this kitchen floor here. Or perhaps this strange anomaly is another more mythical substance. Star jelly is a clear gelatinous goo that has been found on grass and plants. And according to some mythology, it's deposited on Earth following meteor showers. Typically, the star jelly substance just disintegrates and leaves behind no trace or residue. Even if this gooey figure is in no way related to star jelly, Gerhardt still thinks we might be looking at something extraterrestrial in nature. Some alien theorists think that if we do find life elsewhere in the universe, it would not have evolved on our planet, so it might not even be carbon-based like we are. It could be made out of silicon or some other substance. There's a strong chance that it's going to look more like this as opposed to anything that we know of from the fossil record. Some scientists believe the first aliens we encounter will be simpler life forms or microorganisms. That's because of the discovery of some bacteria here on Earth that can survive in acidic lakes or boiling hot springs like this one in Yellowstone Park. These so-called extremophile organisms might be found on planets with harsher environments than Earth, but was one found on this kitchen floor? Let's ask the experts. First, video analyst Mick West examines whether this footage could have been faked. If we zoom in on bits of this, we can see there's these kind of ridges in the object. And when it goes over uh, lines like it does here, you can see it's actually refracting the light and causing these lines to break up. And we see it interacting with the environment. Like right here, we see it go up against these pipes. Uh, there's a little wave where it goes over the pipes. I think that this is actually a real object that we're looking at. Next, West points out that the substance star jelly may be less mythical than it seems. One of the explanations for star jelly is that it's uh, animals vomiting frog spawn. They eat the jelly with the, the frog eggs in it, they partially digest it, and then they throw it up again. Birds presumably eat frogs. The mucus jelly expands in the bird's stomach in contact with water, and the bird vomits it up. But in this case, he's not sure the star jelly theory holds together. Star jelly typically falls apart when you pick it up, and this holds together very well when he's pushing it around with the broom, so I don't think it's star jelly. Next, marine biologist Shea Conger considers the alien theory. She agrees the first aliens we meet might be simpler life forms. But she thinks that would mean us going to them, not them coming to us. The technology needed to travel to Earth from millions of light years away would be incredibly complex. I don't see any evidence of anything like a complex brain or central nervous system. So the idea that this is some kind of advanced 
extraterrestrial life is pretty unlikely. It would probably be a little more technologically and anatomically defined. We don't know where it happened, but Conger thinks there's a clue to that and what this is. This object looks like a lot of decaying jellyfish that I've seen on the shore. And what we're seeing here is part of the natural decomposition process when a marine invertebrate ends up on, in a dry environment like the beach. It's possible there could have been some sort of high tide or a flood and this, this animal ended up in these people's house. But either way, it somehow made its way from the ocean into a populated area. Our verdict? This is a jellyfish, a dead one who's in the process of decomposing. How it made its way to this person's kitchen is anyone's guess. It's March 21st, 2022, Maroochydore Door Beach, 60 miles outside of Brisbane, Australia. Alex Tan is strolling along the coast when he stumbles across something unusual. He takes out his camera and records this. I honestly don't know what it is. An odd looking creature, which appears to be deceased, lying in the sand. Let's take a closer look. It sure doesn't look like it came from the sea, more like something out of an H.G. Wells novel with its dog-like body and rodent-like head. So I'm trying to figure out what it was and had the color of, you know, like a chicken nugget. It was just weird. It really just threw me off. I was just so fascinated at what I'd found. Author and journalist Aaron McCarthy says that when the video first went viral, thousands of social media users suggested this could be a bunyip. Sure, it could, but what's a bunyip? A bunyip, which is actually a creature from indigenous Australian folklore that it said loves to eat people, specifically women and children. It's a creature that lives in water holes, lakes, and rivers around Australia. It's been said to look like a seal or sometimes a swimming dog. The word bunyip actually first appeared in print in the 1840s when some discovered fossils that were theorized to be a bunyip. There was actually what was said to be a bunyip skull displayed in the Australian Museum in Sydney for a couple of days in the 1840s. McCarthy also wonders if this creature's odd appearance could be explained by some sort of mutation caused by nuclear testing. Some have actually speculated that this creature is a mutated wallaby. Between the early 1950s and the early 1960s, the British government performed nuclear tests at three sites across Australia. Emu Island, Maralinga, and the Montebello Islands. There were 12 major tests performed at these sites, and some of the weapons that were detonated were actually as big as the bombs used during Hiroshima. Those particles have caused a lot of problems for the wildlife that live in those areas. One other thought. There's also a biosecurity sciences lab located in nearby Brisbane. Could this thing have been the subject of some secret medical experiment and somehow gotten loose? This show is no stranger to odd beach carcasses. One of our first segments focused on this strange creature found in South Carolina. Some said it had escaped from a nearby off-limits island where thousands of monkeys are bred for research. Could something similar have happened here? Or perhaps this is the legendary bunyip, or some new undiscovered species from Australia's vast outback. Let's let our experts see what's up down under. We begin with forensic video analyst Michael Primo to see if this video could have been altered. We were able to confirm that these four recordings came from an Apple iPhone. There were no programs that interacted with these files and changed the evidence in, in any way digitally. If the video hasn't been altered, what could we be seeing here? We turn to marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger to test the popular online theory that this is a bunyip. It looks like a mammal to me, but there's not a lot of definable features. The bunyip is said to be kind of a aquatic animal, and what I see here looks to be a really typical quadrupedal animal. So I think because of this fact, it's very unlikely to say that this is a bunyip. But if it's not a bunyip, what could it be? Wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler takes a look to see if this could be the result of radioactive experiments in the area. Radiation can damage DNA cells, and anytime there is damage to DNA during replication process, this creates mutations. Usually from radiation, the DNA makes mistakes in replication and just keeps replicating cells in their tumor cells. 
Damage caused by radiation, like in the Chernobyl disaster, usually leads to side effects like cancer or radiation sickness, which can cause hair loss. But Shuttler has another theory that explains why this creature is hairless. You can tell the tide is going down, so it's very likely that this creature has been in the water for a long time, in the ocean, and when they're exposed to the ocean water and the sun's rays, it can cause the fur to come off as part of the decomposition process. So what about the wallaby theory, a creature known to be widespread down under? Wallabies are, are similar to kangaroos, but I don't see evidence that it's a wallaby. If it were a wallaby, you would have more powerful hind legs. They would be longer in comparison to the, the forearms. And in this case, they seem to be pretty equal. It looks more like an animal that walks on all fours rather than hops like a wallaby would. So if it's not a wallaby, what are we looking at here? Australia has lots of possum species. I think it's the brush tail possum. The limbs are similar in length. Opossums have naked tails. They don't really have any fur in their tails. Our verdict, this is a brush tailed possum in the stages of decomposition. It's missing its hair because it's been in the ocean. June 29th, 2017 on Yale Lake in Southwest Washington. Two men take their kayaks out for a relaxing afternoon when the calm waters are suddenly disturbed. Weird The video seems to show bubbles rising to the surface of the water in the center of the lake as the kayakers paddle towards them. Just bubbles coming from the bottom of the lake. No current. I'm afraid to put my hand in the water. One kayaker dips his camera below the waterline, and we see debris and thousands of bubbles swirling. Weird though, dude. The bubbling is so intense, the other kayaker panics and paddles off. Go, go, go. Then an ominous burst of murky brown water erupts as hundreds of leaves are belched up to the surface. What the f What the f is happening? Something just happened that we caught on camera. Dude, it stinks. Field researcher and author Ken Gerhardt tries to help us understand what we're seeing in the video. My first thoughts are, is there something alive beneath the water that's creating these bubbles and this disturbance in the water? Yale Lake is connected to the Columbia River, which has been said to be home to this massive creature called Colossal Claude. Sightings date back to the early 1930s. The general physical description is a huge animal, about 40 feet long, with a serpentine, although a very thick, powerful body, and what was described as a very evil, snaky head. Many of the lakes around the world where these monsters have been reported all boast healthy populations of salmon and trout. So perhaps these lake monsters might also live in the ocean and follow the salmon populations into fresh water to feed. There are dozens, maybe thousands, of undiscovered creatures inhabiting the world's lakes. Recently, researchers uncovered around 40 new species in Lake Imweru, located between Zambia and the Democratic Republic of Congo. But was whatever these kayakers saw a creature from the deep? Let's see what swimming in our experts thought bubbles. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger begins her analysis by addressing the lake monster theory. The number of salmon in the Columbia River has dramatically decreased. And this is an important resource, not only for humans, but for wildlife. So if there were some sort of abnormally large animal in Yale Lake, it probably wouldn't have a lot of food to live off of. And so it's pretty unlikely that there are undiscovered large animals in Yale Lake. There are actually a couple of freshwater seal populations in the world. But if this were something like a seal or a whale, we would definitely see the animal itself. And seals really only hold their breath for maybe 20 minutes at a time. What about those bubbles? Geologist Bob Anderson helps us figure out what could be happening here. Natural gas and, and oil are formed between sedimentary layers. And you get a lot of carboniferous materials that are from the time before the dinosaurs. And these areas get buried deep down. 
and that pressure and heat causes those organic materials to break down into hydrocarbons. And all it takes is a crack in the rock and they just release and they pop real fast. The Carboniferous period occurred 300 million years ago. So these organic materials have been building pressure for quite some time, just waiting to blow. When you look at the video and, and you add in the combination of those bubbles and the smell at the end. Dude, it stinks. To me, it's a dead clue that it's some type of a natural gas that's coming up. This happens all over the world. Massive underwater craters have been discovered off the coast of Norway up to 147 feet deep and 2,624 feet wide. Researchers have deemed them the cause of expulsions of gas rising to the surface in the area. Our verdict? Natural gas. The smell was the clincher. The kayaker complained about the horrible aroma, which is a common attribute of methane gas when it mixes with hydrogen sulfide, causing a rotten egg odor. While the men didn't come across colossal claw, they did still stumble upon a remarkable piece of natural history.